Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering UiPath Forward Americas 2019. Brought to you by UiPath. Welcome back to the Bellagio, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. This is day two of UiPath's Forward 3 conference. And Courtney Bradbury, Bradbury is here, sorry. A R&D specialist at American Fidelity. And she's joined by Michael Setikasi, who's the Senior Director, uh, Director of Business Development at Boston-based DataRobot, but Michael's from Seattle. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Hey, Courtney, great to let's be here. start with you. I know you guys are kind of do benefits, solutions, but maybe talk a little bit about the company and some of the big trends that are driving what you guys are doing. Absolutely, so I work at, with at American Fidelity. Um, it's an insurance company based out of Oklahoma, but our main focus is providing solutions to our customers' pain points. So we're a niche-based organization that focuses mainly on education, so the um, public sector, so education and municipalities, and providing solutions and benefits to our employers and our employees that we work with. Cool, and, and Michael, you guys, obviously data science is your, your thing, but describe a little bit more about what you guys do. Yeah, we're an AI enterprise company. What we're really trying to do is uh, democratize the use of AI machine learning within organizations, and uh, we really appeal to both data scientists and business users mm -hmm. that understand their business and data and want to do more. So Courtney, you're, you, your title is really interesting, R&D Special Projects, so you got like right. this little sandbox yeah. that you get to play with. RPA is, you know, it was on the hype cycle, now it's in the trough of, trough of disillusionment, but it's kind of a, you know, an early play around with things. Right. How'd you get into RPA? RPA, where are you guys at? What's this R&D thing going on? Right, so with research and development, it gives us a lot of space to work with emerging technologies and AI and RPA and how those two things come together and, and anything new that we see and exciting, um, we're able to apply that technology. It's one thing to think, oh, AI, let's cool, let's do that. But it's, it, it's, if it doesn't benefit your customer at the end of the day, if it's not driving decisions in your organization, then we don't want to do AI just because it's cool. We really want to do AI because it's what benefits our customer. Mm -hmm. um, so we got into to RPA because when, when we saw a demo and it was like, whoa, if that's, if that's real, if that's what we think it's going to be, that's a game changer. So you have RPA and you have AI kind of coming up at the same time and whenever it was you know, first coming out a few years ago, they're, they're siloed, they're separate. What we've started to do recently is to bring the two industries together and, and really bring together the RPA component and the, IA, the, the AI component to really become um, IPA, or intelligent process automation, um, so that way we can really start to transform businesses. So this is interesting to me, Michael, because as Courtney was saying, most people think of these things as separate and more uh, aspirational down, down the road. You guys are AI experts. What are you seeing in terms of these two domains coming together? Yeah, um, you hear about intelligent automation everywhere, right? And um, we are pushing it hard, and we're seeing uh, we're seeing a lot of customers and potential prospects look at it. But I have to give credit to American Fidelity; they are ahead of the curve. They are combining this ability to use an RPA process and a machine learning model to really like automate things and provide better customer service and get to the endpoint faster and more efficiently. So I think they're ahead of the curve. But you're going to see. You're going to see more and more of this in the marketplace. So Courtney, a lot of the customers that we talk to, this is kind of my observation, is they're automating obviously mundane processes, but frankly really crappy processes. They're, mm -hmm. they're really screwed up in a lot of ways. <laughs> and they're throwing RPA at the problem. Um, it sounds like you have a little different philosophy mm -hmm. around how to apply right. automation. Can you explain that? Right, so, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to automate something that's bad because then it's going to break a lot and there, it's just not a good idea. So what, what we've tried to do is um, whenever we get, you know, requests in the door, there's always a stopping, if, if somebody has to make a decision in the past, it's been, okay, well we can automate the first part and the last part, but it's going to have to stop in the middle for you to make a decision. And what Data Robot has allowed us to do in, in the past, it was really hard to actually apply machine learning because you had to have these data scientists and they'd have to spend months trying to figure out what model fit the data and is it, you know, retraining the model is really difficult. Data Robot makes um, a data scientist's job so much easier and actually applicable to the workplace where you can scale so, like it, it uh, uh, enables 
enable scaling um, because without data robot or without a service like that, it's impossible to scale. So it, it allows us to implement AI with our RPA to then not just automate the mundane processes, but the small decisions that we make every day just because we do our jobs every day and we know how to do our jobs, AI enables us to automate those processes as well. And you're doing that in an unattended way or is it, a, is, is it an attended Both. automation? Both, so there's some, there's some processes that we have to have a human select things and make certain decisions along the way or there's some processes that are completely unattended Attended. Um, with any automation, you know, your goal is always to automate 100%, but in reality, you're usually going to get around 80% of a process automated. So, what we try to do is automate, we go for the 100%, rarely get that, but then you can kick out the 20% for human review. And so, maybe that the, of the 20% that's not fully automated, maybe we can make stop points for human interaction there. But there have been some processes that we have been able to fully automate. So Michael, the data scientists complain that 80% of their time is spent on wrangling data and getting the data ready to actually build a model. I, I presume you're, you, that's what you guys do, you solve that problem, right? So, oh, so We definitely solve some of that, right? If you get the data all in one place, DataRobot takes care of a lot of the data preparation that's involved in data science. We have also have ways to kind of manage the best places you store your data so that if other people use the platform, they can see where to get it to. Um, but overall, I would just say, like, when you look at UiPath and the way it's growing, it's such an exciting growing company. Like, we heard Daniel yesterday mention, like, their growth from customer from year to year, um, how they're the fastest enterprise software growing company out there. So you combine that RPA market with this growing machine learning market, and there's a ton of excitement. I mean, that's what you're seeing at the conference today. So you guys have data scientists on, on staff, is that right? Or, Correct, Okay, yes. and so what does this mean for them? Does it mean you just need less of them, or they spend more of their time doing productive work? Or? It means they spend more of their time doing more productive work instead of trying to figure out what model to fit. You know, because if you're a data scientist, you know, or an actuary or any and data analyst, any of those things, you might know five models that you try to fit everything to. What Data Robot en enables us to do is not be stuck to those five models that we know. It enables us to combine models and choose models based on that data, so it really helps us with the modeling. Are, are you, I should have asked this before, are you, are you still in R&D, are you in production, or where are you at in terms of the maturity? Oh no, we're in production, we're in production. Um, we have, you know, we have two, IPA processes in production today, um, and we're working on increasing that as we go. We have over 150 RPA processes in, in production, as well as um, many, many just machine learning. So we're working on combining those now. So we have many machine learning, we have many RPA, and we're working on increasing our IPA. What have you seen as the business impact? Do you have enough data yet to sort of Absolutely, share? you know, our, the, our, our, we don't try to focus on ROI. What we try to focus on is how is this impacting our customer and how is this impacting our employees' lives? You know, there's obviously a lot of fear around automation, but we, what, what at American Fidelity, what we try to do is show how this is going to improve our employees' lives, and we're by no means trying to cut jobs. We're actually going to have a net increase of jobs over the next five years. We're reskilling our workforce, and we, we're really focusing on how it improves our employees rather than focusing on ROI. You're not, so you're not on the ROI treadmill? So how did you get your CFO to sort of agree we, to all this? <laughs> so we do track ROI. It's not something we share publicly, um, but you know, we, we focus more on our humans and our employees than our ROI. Is that because, I mean, you're not, you know, virtually every customer I've talked to says, well, we're not firing people. Right. We're just getting, you know, more productive. We're shifting them to more interesting tasks, et cetera, et cetera. And if you, if you do the ROI calculations, you say, oh, I don't need as many humans to do this anymore, and so you'd say, okay, FTE costs, and then you apply that, and it's a, kind of a BS number, because it's not like you're cutting people. So it's not a hard ROI. Is that why you don't focus on ROI, or you just think it's a, a, a worthless metric, or? No, no I, I mean, actually, I'm sorry, you said you do have it, you just don't share it right, publicly. Right, we, we just don't share our ROI publicly, and, and I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's made up or it's fake. You know, I've never, 
never met an organization that says they have more people than they have work for people. Like there's always work. I really enjoy the first video opening of UiPath. It's since the beginning of time, humans have worked, you know, and everyone thinks that automation is going to like take rid of, get rid of jobs. There's a lot of controversy over that, but realistically, if you think about the first industrial revolution, that was after the industrial revolution hit, that was the biggest economic upturn uh, that had seen since that time. We're in that same space now. It's just hard to see it with where we're at. So um, I, it's only going to increase. Work is only going to increase. It's definitely going to change. I think it's naive to think that jobs won't change. Um, and there will be jobs that will be eliminated, job functions, but I don't think there's elimination of humans needed, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, it does. I mean, you think you guys sound like you're pretty visionary about how to apply technology to, you, to your business. And Michael, I mean, Courtney's right, humans, uh, machines have always replaced humans. This is nothing new. First time ever that it's in cognitive function, so that scares people a little bit, but what else are you seeing in the marketplace that you can share with us? Um, we're just seeing increased use of automation. So like you might think uh, when you talk data robot, you're using us for the top 1% you know, things that a company might do, right? If you're a bank, you might use us to help out, figure out how you can more efficiently lend customers money and make sure that you're making good investments. But what we're finding is uh, automation and machine learning models are being used everywhere. They're being used in marketing now, right? Uh, an example could be this show. We'll get leads from this show. Let's run some machine learning to understand what leads to follow up on first because we'll get the best result. We're seeing machine learning in HR, right? Making sure their employees are happy, tracking employee churn through machine learning. So I think what we're seeing is it's being adopted more broadly, which means you need, you, you need more people we're not replacing people. So, why UiPath? Well, well, you know, whenever we started the vendor process and started looking at several vendors, um, the UiPath product just was unmatched, frankly. Um, their ability to, there, there was a lot of vendors that had more code base and there was then UiPath that anyone can learn. And that's what we really like, is in American Fidelity we've chosen to go with, we have a COE, but we've also chosen to go with um, a democratized model where everyone in the organization um, will be able to build robots. We're training people to build robots. We have, each department has people that are dedicated. Um, a sort, certain portion of their time is built building robots, and UiPath really made that available with their products for anybody to be able to learn. So you have a COE. Yes. It was interesting, Craig LeClaire this morning, I don't know if you saw his keynote, but he, he, he kind of made the statement, it was sort of an offhanded statement, it's a COE, maybe that's too, um, asking too much, you know, he almost, he didn't use the term tiger team, but he, I inferred, it's like, rather just kind of get a tiger team of some experts, but, but talk a little bit more about your COE. So, we kind of go with a hybrid model. If you think about, you know, typical, it's, it's weird because RPA is only a few years old and we're thinking typical RPA, but people usually either go with a COE or completely democratized. We've really gone with a hybrid model. So we have a COE with governance where we've set a loose framework of what to follow and we have code standards and we say, you know, follow these things. We have a knowledge library that we share. Um, but we only have a, a handful of full-time RPA developers and everyone else, those developers help teach and help um, grow that knowledge throughout the organization. So that way we have people in every area that can also develop. So our developers are not our only key developers. Our developers are focused on the IPA, on the AI, um, where, whereas our other people throughout the organization are focused more on RPA, so we can really make a big difference more quickly. Do you have a software robot sort of um, that automates uh, auditing and, and checks for compliance? Yeah, so we, uh, we have um, one of our robots, what, what the function that it does is audit one of our um, inputs. So we do have robots in almost every area that, yeah, we do have audit robots. Has it cut the auditing bill? Is that part of the <laughs> ROI? You don't have to answer that. Um, all right, Michael, uh, last question for you is, is um, where do you see this all going? You know, I'm, I'm, this is very interesting to me because I've, I've inferred from a lot of the conversations that like the PepsiCo guy was up uh, yesterday talking about an AI fabric throughout the organization, not just tactical projects. And that kind of interested me, but I expect that it's you know, much further off. I'm hearing from Courtney that it's, it's actually real today. 
What's your sort of prediction or forecast for the adoption of this you know, more advanced intelligent process automation? Is it kind of just starting now and it's going to explode, or am I just missing the mark here? No, I think you're 100% on. I mean, first off, I think, uh, like I mentioned earlier, RPA and machine learning separately are in these incredible growth stages, right? And we think, uh, you know, our message to customers now is, if you're not thinking about how you're doing AI and machine learning, you're already behind, because your competition is. And so you better get thinking about it. I think we're going to get to that level with intelligent automation, with RPA plus you know, machine learning, very soon. I do think right now we're in that infancy stage where people are looking for use cases and they want to hear great stories. And so I do think American Fidelity is ahead of the curve, but they're not going to be ahead of the curve for long. It's catching up. If you're not doing it, we're going to eventually get to that point where you'll have someone like you know, Elon Musk or you know, Masayoshi son say, you know, if you're not thinking of intelligent automation, you're already going to be left behind. Great. All right, well, congratulations on uh, the work that you've done. It's Thank a you. really awesome story. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming yeah. on theCUBE. Yeah, thanks for having Great. us. Thanks for having us. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back from UI Path Forward, day number two. You're watching theCUBE. Right back.